Hello everybody, Mike Westfall here with McDonald Garden Center and today I'm gonna to be talking about techniques for limbing up your crepe myrtles. And so crepe myrtles are one of the most popular trees in the Hampton Roads area. They're very easy to grow, they're drought tolerant, they're disease and insect resistant. And so that's what I'm gonna talk about today is how to limb them up. Crepe myrtles naturally grow as a large shrub. I'm gonna show you some examples here and I've got two examples here that I'm actually gonna prune one of them so you can see live in action how to prune or limb up your crepe myrtle. But it really applies to a lot of different plants. So it could apply, it could apply to a Japanese maple or a large shrub that maybe you want to turn into a small tree. This really is a great technique and we use this term of limbing up a lot in the horticultural industry. And a lot of customers, you know, just the normal gardener doesn't quite understand that practice. And so that's what I want to do today is give you a demonstration on how to limb up a cray myrtle or a shrub or a small tree. There's lots and lots of applications for this technique and so that's what we're going to talk about today. Crepe myrtles are one of my favorites because they bloom for over 100 days. You might have heard somebody say or, or you might see it in ads, uh, the, the tree of 100 days. And the reason people use that uh, kind of term for crepe myrtles is because they can bloom for almost three months, for over three months. Uh, there's some amazing varieties out there and there's tons of them. And so that's kind of one thing that I want to talk about is the selection and that's why I love crepe myrtles so much because they can fit so many different areas because the sizes there's a wide range in sizes. Crepe myrtles come in shrubs that only get three to four or five, six feet tall. And then some that are kind of what I call semi-dwarf, which are gonna be somewhere around the 10 to 12 foot range. And then you've got your full blown trees that can get 20, 25, even 30 feet tall. So you got a tree that can fit a lot of different uh, styles and uh, shapes of landscape because you got the different sizes. And then of course the color arrangement. So you've got reds, purples, whites, and pinks, and you've got lots and lots of different shades in between. And even a lot of the newer varieties actually have a very burgundy and dark leaf, which makes them really, really cool and very, very high contrast. You know, you get that dark leaf and a pink bloom or a red bloom or a white bloom on it. It's absolutely stunning. And so crepe myrtles are great because of the selection and you can use them in so many different places. Uh, let's see, uh, the next thing I wanna talk about, or I wanted to show you some of those images. So here, right here, this is probably a dynamite or a red rocket. And that's actually what I'm gonna be limbing up today is the dynamite here um, that I've got right next to me. But this is a great example. You see this a lot around town. You see you know, people, and you maybe even have one like this. And hopefully that's why you're tuning in because you wanna learn how to kind of take this tree and change it, it, its habit a little bit. And that's what we're gonna be talking about. So this is a prime example of a really, really nice looking plant. It's blooming, it's healthy, it's obviously doing well, but it looks kind of out of sorts, or at least to what we might think. Now this is again to the eye of the beholder. If you like a big shrub and that's what you want your crepe myrtle to be, that's how they naturally grow. They really are very, very shrubby in habit. Um, now naturally over time they can start to lose some of their bottom limbs just because they get shaded from the top half. Um, but really naturally they're gonna grow as a large shrub and I think all of us kind of think of a tree as something that's got a trunk and a top. You know, we think of a lollipop, when we draw a tree when we're a kid, it's got the trunk and then it's got the top. So crepe myrtles grow as a shrub and so that's kind of what we wanna talk about is how to form that into a tree. Um, so another great example is this one right here. So this is a great example of how large a tree can get. For one, this is probably the Muscogee. Muscogees can get 25, 30 feet tall easily. And this one is just growing out in a field. So of course, it's never been touched. And if you've got space and this is what you want to achieve, then by all means, never prune it, never touch it, just let it grow. And this is what it will form over time. But if you want to grow it to walk underneath it, or you want to be able to mow around it, or one of my favorite reasons is to plant more underneath it, then you'll probably want to limit up. And here's another great example. This is a smaller one. This is what I would call a semi-dwarf. Uh, you can see it's probably right around that eight to 10 foot range, but it's so shrubby and inside that tree, there's a really cool, unique habit in that trunk structure. And that's what we want to show off. And that's what we want to be able to see. And it adds winter interest as well. So in the winter, this is going to look like a big bear shrub. Crape myrtles lose their leaves in the winter. So it's going to lose all its leaves. And it's going to expose the inside but it's not gonna really highlight that unique bark and trunk. So here's a couple examples of trees that are limbed up. So here's a great example. This is probably early spring because we can see the daffodils below me blooming. Um, but you can see the winter interest in having a tree that's limbed up and properly limbed up because you get that exposure 
and so you're allowed to be able to see that bark. A lot of crepe myrtles have a very nice exfoliating bark that you get to see, and the best way to see it is by limbing it up. And so that's kind of what we're gonna talk about today. Plus, one of my favorite reasons is so that you can plant things underneath them, right? So of course, I always want more and more and more plants, more plants in my yard. And so by taking a crepe myrtle that maybe is very bushy in habit and limbing it up allows you to plant underneath it, allows you to walk underneath it so you can create walkways underneath it, you can create a different garden space underneath it. You you could also put a bench in it. I don't know if you can quite see it, but all the way down there on that walkway is a bench so you can sit underneath crepe myrtles. They're gorgeous, gorgeous trees. They have a great canopy. And by limiting it up, we're actually going to increase airflow, which is going to decrease issues that you might have with like powdery mildew, which is one of the very, very small things that crepe myrtles can get is powdery mildew sometimes. Um, but the airflow is going to improve. It's also going to show off the bark, as I mentioned, show off that habit. I love crepe myrtle bark and I love just that trunk. It looks like a muscle, you know, kind of contorting and kind of twisting around itself. It's just an amazing, amazing looking trunk to it. Um, it's also going to help force the growth upwards. So a lot of times we want all of that growth up on the top and we're going to lose some of it because it's putting energy into the bottom. And so by eliminating that, by limiting it up, we're actually going to improve the growth habit up top as well. All right, so here's what you're going to need to get started, of course. So if you're going out to prune your crayon myrtle, one, let's talk about timing real quick. Timing, really for doing this project, you could do this any time of the year. Limbing up isn't going to severely hurt the tree. Crepe myrtles are very strong, durable trees, and we're just going to take off some of the branches below. And so it's really not going to hurt it um, if you are taking a big tree and you're going to do some pretty severe pruning, uh, especially to the lower half. Uh, you might consider doing that in the winter months when it's dormant. So typically around January, February is a great time to go out and do that. So if you've got a large, big specimen and you need to take off some serious limbs on it, if it's just one or two, not a big deal. But if you're going to be doing the whole tree, like that original example that big huge muskogee and you were going to go limb that up i would probably do that in the winter just because it'll help it kind of heal in time before the summer sets in but on a smaller tree or on a 12 15 footer you're going to be perfectly fine doing this really any time of the year we're not cutting off the top we're not even going to touch the top we're just going to touch the lower half of it so really timing um, is, is an important thing when it comes to pruning but for crepe myrtles and for this demonstration you can really do this any time of the year now what are you going to need you're going to need some pruning tools of course so we've got our lopping pruners so you can see that up in the right hand corner lopper pruners are basically the same as a bypass pruner i've got an example right here and so these just give you a little bit more strength and they can cut up to about a two inch diameter limb. And then of course, we've got our bypass pruners, lots and lots of options for bypass pruners. You can buy inexpensive ones if you're like me and sometimes you leave them outside, it's completely fine. Uh, you can get a pair every year, it's not gonna hurt you too much. Um, and I love these because they have these bright colored handles so they're easy to find if you lose them outside. Um, and then of course, one of my favorite tools of all is the banana saw, the folding saw. So your bypass pruners do about a one inch diameter. A folding saw can do up to a four inch diameter on, on a branch or on a trunk. So I love this guy just because it folds up and I can put it in my back pocket and carry it around with me as I'm doing some pruning jobs around. It's nice to have, it's easy to use, it's not gonna hurt you too much, and it's not gonna cut off the biggest limbs in the world, but it's a great little tool to have. So other tools that you might need are gonna be, you might need a ladder, so if we're, if we're working on a, a larger tree, we might need a ladder. We might need a pair of gloves. Some people love to use gloves. It's not a bad idea. It protects your fingers, especially if you're a little careless with your pruners. A nice pair of leather gloves or just gardening gloves will help save your fingers if you're a little careless with your pruners. Be careful and, and cut slowly and take your time. This is a zen time. This is a zen moment. I'll talk a lot about that as I'm pruning this one. And then you might need a pole pruner or maybe a chainsaw. You know, it just depends on, on how big of a project you're working on. So you might need some other uh, uh, cutting tools. But that's about all you need. Now let's talk about how we're going to make our cuts. We're going to make our cuts flush. And so this is important because a lot of times if you're looking up how to prune a limb, you're going to hear a lot about this collar. Don't cut into the collar. Don't cut into the collar. Well, the collar on a crepe myrtle is not very, very important. What's important is that we make a nice clean cut as close to the trunk as we can possibly get. We don't want to go into the trunk. We don't want to create any kind of cavities that uh, can disturb, one, the flow of nutrients up and down the tree, but also to create somewhere where water can sit. 
So we always want to cut on an angle. And so the nice thing about when we're limbing up, we're almost always going to be cutting on an angle. You're very rarely ever going to do a flat cut. Um, and we wouldn't want to. But the most important thing is to avoid this. So you see this a lot on crepe myrtles. You cut it, and then all of a sudden it sprouts all this new growth. Well, it's because we probably didn't cut it quite flush enough. Not to say that this couldn't happen regardless. It could. Uh, crepe myrtles are aggressive growers. They're going to try and grow from a lot of different spots. But by making a nice flush cut, you should avoid a lot of this happening. And I'll show you that as I prune my crepe myrtle here next to me. You might also have sucker issues. And sucker problems are, are a big problem with crepe myrtles. Uh, suckers are basically shoots that are coming from the root stalk and it's trying to grow as a shrub, right? So we're taking these shrubs or large shrubs or small trees, and we are pruning them into a tree, and it's saying, I want to be a shrub, and so it's growing all these new branches from the bottom. You can either train them as new trunks, um, or what I like to do is try and clip them out. And the best thing that I have found is clip them low, clip them below the soil level as best you can. You're not gonna hurt the root system, especially on an established tree. Um, and just kind of keep on, keep on pruning it, and eventually the tree gets it. Now, there are products out there like this Sucker Punch. Sucker Punch is a good one. Um, there's Sucker Stopper, there's a lot of these. These are growth inhibitors. Basically what you're gonna do is you're gonna prune the suckers down to the ground as low as you possibly can. And then as they regrow and before they get too hard, so usually you want it on soft new growth, somewhere in that like four to six to eight inch range. And you're gonna spray it with this and it's gonna prevent that sucker from growing anymore. There's lots of different applications for it. Of course, always read your label, but this is a great option. The most important thing that I always tell people with this is make sure your tree is healthy, it's vigorous. Usually trees that are healthy and vigorous don't have a whole lot of suckers because they're putting their energy into the top where they want it. So if your tree is getting a lot of suckers, make sure it's not got dead branches, it's got a lot of issues going on, and maybe we need to correct those things, which will correct suckers over time. Um, but if you do have suckers and your tree is healthy, then this is a great option for you. So of course we always have that for you. All right, so now I'm gonna actually give you the demonstration on this crepe myrtle. This is a dynamite crepe myrtle. This is gonna be a lot of fun. This is one of my favorite things to do is prune plants. And this is kind of where I mentioned that Zen moment. This is where I love to just kind of, you know, at home, I'll just kind of grab a glass of wine later in the evening and just sit down and kind of prune some of my specimen plants. It's a lot of fun for me uh, to just get out there and do that. So some people might think this is a project and oh man, I gotta do this, but take your time. And my most important tip is you can never put it back on. So cut slowly and cut where you make sure that you are sure that that's what you want to do. And that's what I'm going to demonstrate right now. So I'm going to bring this up. So you won't be able to see the top as much, but that's okay. We don't need to see the top. I want you to be able to see this bottom half. This is really the area we're going to work in. So a lot of times I'll look at it and I'll say, where am I going to prune this tree to? So probably, you know, I like to probably come up into this area. I can see the trunk. So you can see there's nice, really nice trunks in there. But when we say limbing up here at the garden center, and I say it a lot to customers, and I, and I can kind of just see people glaze over and say, what are you talking about? Limbing up uh, or limb up a tree. And so what that basically is, is just taking some of this growth from down here. And you can see none of it has blooms on it. There's hardly any blooms down here. There's one little bloom over here. But really all it is is just some leaf and some small branches. And the, this is going to take energy away from the tree. It's actually not putting the energy up into here as much as it could because it's still having to support all of this. And we, of course, like our trees to look like a tree, like we would draw. So we want to see the trunk and show off that habit and force the growth up to the top. So that's why this is a great practice and it's a lot of fun too. I just enjoy it. It's one of my favorite things to do here at the garden center and at home as well is get out there and prune. So it's really, really easy. Basically, I always like to start with some of this small twiggy growth. So that's all I'm gonna do is just kind of start there. And again, I'm always trying to get as flush as I can to the trunk. And what I wanna do is always have my blade side of my by bypass pruners. So I got my Felcos out. These are my Felcos. Felcos are very, very nice pruners. If you're big into pruning and you want to get a nice pair of pruners, these are the ones to get. But I always want my blade side, not my anvil side, uh, closest to the trunk. So I'm always pruning with this, so you can see this side is the blade side. I'm always pruning with that closest to the trunk. So you're going to see my hand go like this and like this and kind of contort a little bit so that I'm always kind of cutting as flush as I possibly can to that trunk. And even sometimes you'll even see some of these tiny little pieces, you can even kind of snap off. I do like to try and get a cut on there so that I make sure it's nice and flush, but that is, and then I'm gonna get into some larger stuff here. So here's a great example right here. We got it right off the bat. 
nice large branch here that's coming off to the side. And again, you can imagine this tree being 20 feet tall and you can imagine it being as small as it is right now. So this applies to a lot of different plants, as I mentioned before. But you're gonna have this side branch here. You gotta make sure that, of course, I'm gonna wanna take this one off. It's on the bottom. It's not anywhere in the direction that I want it to go, but I might have some examples later on where, you where you're gonna take this and turn this into a new trunk, basically. Crape myrtles are typically multi-trunked, so it becomes hard when I say limit up. A lot of people say, I just wanna follow this one stem all the way up. So when I get to a break, I gotta make a decision. Not always true, you can keep those, and then you just treat that as a new trunk and you limb that up. And I'll show you that as I go along. So there we go. Now we can already start to see this is exposing. I'm gonna keep going around and just keep taking out all of this tiny, tiny little growth. All right, we've got another great example here. This is gonna be a tricky one, so hopefully you can see into this branch structure here. So right here where my hand is, is a lot going on. I've got two pretty much what I used to call telephone poles, probably old suckers. So they're growing straight up through the tree. I mean, you can literally see this one is just growing just vertically, perfectly straight up through the tree. And it is not a bad trunk. And then I kind of shake it and I kind of see where it is. It does have a bloom on it up here. So I've got a nice big bloom on it. So I think for now I'm gonna keep it because remember what I said, I can't put it back on. But I do not like this one. This one right here, this one's coming off because it's kind of in my face for one, but two, it is not really producing anything and it's coming straight off to the side. So again, trying to get that as close to the trunk as I possibly can. I got another kind of telephone pole here. Unfortunately, this one is not where I want it and it is kind of blocking. And I also look sometimes, so this is the branch I'm talking about right now. This one is a little weak. It's not super, super strong. It does have some blooms on it, so it is healthy, but it is growing straight up. It's also rubbing on my main branch in here. So it's really kind of crossed over. Here's my main trunk coming this way, and here's this telephone pole shoot that's coming out. So I am gonna wanna take that one off. It is coming out of the ground or very low to the trunk here, so I'm gonna try and get it. Yep, so it was actually coming out of the trunk. That's good news, because if I get it as low as I possibly can, we shouldn't get any regrowth out of that. There we go. So we'll take that out. Now we're really starting to see some trunk habit here. Keep taking out any of this weak wood and just kind of, like I said, slowly but surely work your way around. Can't put it back on. Now I've got kind of a, a little bit of a mess over here. So we've got a bunch of branches here, poorly pruned section. So I can see right here, it was pruned right here and it's been just grown as a shrubby kind of portion here. So you can take just to see it a little bit better and you can take some of this off. This one's coming off back to the trunk. And then I've got this nub right here. Now, if I left that, I'm gonna get all of this sucker growth. I'm gonna get all of these little shoots coming out of there. So I wanna make sure I get that nice and close. Now, what you can also see here is I've got this branch here. This branch is coming off. It's a pretty significant branch. It's a little bit low, it might not be quite where I want it, so I'm probably gonna take this off, but I'm gonna think about it first. I'm still working on the other, so I kind of like to work my way up slowly but surely. And so, what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna leave this, but I'll probably come back to it and I'll probably take it off. Let's spin back this way and keep working on some of this small growth here. And take all of this stuff off. And now I can start working my way up. Here's a great example, let me see if I can show this to you. So this one right here, you can see it comes up, it breaks right here. So we've got a fork right here. We got basically a split right here. It's a nice strong split. It's a good V split. Um, it's gonna be a strong branch. This is a very good size portion of the tree. It's also staying kind of in habit. It's not crossing anything. It's on the outside. I don't wanna eliminate that one. And I don't wanna eliminate that one, so I'm gonna keep both of them. And then all I'm gonna do is just limb those up. So we'll just take this. And then I think I'm probably going to stop right about there. I won't take off anymore. I got one more little shoot that's kind of shooting up through here, through the middle. And it's actually a dead piece, so good to get that out of there. All right, so now I've gotten myself to a spot, left a couple pieces. And if you go through and you kind of run your hand on the branch and you can feel some of those things, just go back in and just get it nice and cut, nice and flush. We want to get it as flush as we possibly can. So now what I've also got here is I've got one branch that I'm, or one trunk system that I'm really happy with. I really like how this one turned out. 
it looks great, it's about limbed up to about the height that I want. So now I've got something that I can start to work my way around and kind of compare it to. Because I want them all to be somewhat even. I don't want one limbed up real high and the other one limbed way down low. So we'll start on this big section over here. We got a little dead piece down here at the bottom. Got a little sucker, but it is coming out of the trunk. So that's good, got that one nice and close. And then we'll just work our way around. And as I mentioned, I love doing this because it's so much fun because you get to create something out of your existing plant. And so if you've got one that's old, you know, take your time. But if you're planting a new one or you just bought one and it's a little shrubby in habit and you don't really like the way it looks, always whenever you're buying a crepe myrtle or any tree for that matter, always, this is what I look at. I look at the trunk. I very rarely ever look at the top. I'm always looking at this system because this is my base. This is my home base of this tree. This is where it's always gonna grow from and this is what's gonna give me that look over the years. So I'm always looking at the trunk system of my trees, especially when it comes to crepe myrtles. All right, we got another decision to make over here. I've got this shoot over here. You can see it right here. This is the one I'm working on. It's a big size shoot. It's this entire branch over here. So you can see this one right here, but it's not this one. So this one's significant. This one's not as significant. It's got some blooms on it. So let's limit up, right? Let's keep it, let's limit up. Let's see if we like it over time. So you never know until you work it all the way up. So let's just take that one and limb that little branch up and see if we're gonna keep it over time. All right, we're getting closer to getting to the point where we can make some bigger decision on some of these bigger branches because I'm getting to the point where I almost can stand back and look at it and see where we're at. So I still got a little bit of weaker growth in here. I'm looking at my other branch over here, want to make sure. And again, keep these, keep these little ones very, very flush. So you want to make sure you're getting those really nice and flush so we don't get any more growth from there. And this is somewhat the tedious process of taking all these smaller ones off. But still fun because at the end you get to see what you've created. And I always like standing back from something that I've been able to work on and see what I've done. I've got one more little section over here that is still kind of jumbled up. So this is kind of a funky one here. We've got some crossing branches. This is still part of that major stem. I've got that little telephone. So we're back to that kind of telephone pole one that I didn't take off. Um, so before I do, let's not jump ahead. Let's take this one and just see what happens if we limit up. Basically, you're just trying to open up the bottom. Never cut more than what you think you need to cut. Stand back, make some decisions. A lot of it's gonna be this younger, weaker growth that you can almost just snap off. But as I mentioned, I like to kind of prune it as much as I possibly can unless it's just so tiny that it's almost easier to snap. All right, so let's see, let's get this one out. Now we can make some decisions here, especially in this area. So right here in this area, we've got lots going on. There's too much going on. I've got this kind of telephone pole shoot that's shooting up through the middle here. It's a nice branch, it's got a bloom on it. I don't really wanna lose it, but I might have to for the overall look of my tree. These are nice and hardened off branches. This one is coming through the tree and this one's kind of crossing. So over time, this might cause an issue because you can see right there, this branch crosses this branch. So I've got this crossing section. This branch is coming inside, this branch is going outside. But for now, it's not causing a problem. And so I can kind of watch it over time. But this telephone pole is a problem. And, and I'm gonna take it out because it's just going right through the center. It's got a lot of, you know, it's got one big bloom on the top, which I hate to lose, but we're doing this for the overall health of the tree and for the overall look of the tree. So I'm gonna get that as close as I possibly can. Might be a case where I probably could use a lopping shear, but I think it's small enough that I can get it. Yep, got it. All right, so let's get this out of here. And so yeah, I lost that guy. I lost that really pretty bloom, but you know what? It was fading anyways, so it's good now. All right, so now let's just look around and see. Still got a couple little limbs here to take off. All right, 
Now let's just look around one more time and see if we've got any problems. This branch right here, you can see the leaves start here. So I do want to kind of keep going up on that one. This was that one, <coughs> excuse me, that I mentioned earlier that I might need to eliminate. So it's kind of weak. It's a little crooked. So here we go. It's right here. Let's see if I can turn it. There you go. So you can see that whole branch right there. It's a little weak. It's a little crooked. I've got another one over here that's also got that same kind of issue, but it's a young tree. So it's a, it's a tough call. It's do I leave it or do I take it off? I think I would probably, personally I would say, if I, well, so let's do this. If I take it off, is it gonna make me wanna take this one off too? Right now together they look pretty good. It is a little uneven, right? So I've got this growth coming over here and this is a little bit more upright. So I don't think I like it. I think it's gonna come off in time anyways. So while it's a young tree, I'm gonna go ahead and do it. Let's go ahead and take it off. Again, I'm just trying to get it as flush as I possibly can to that trunk. So you can see that nice flush cut. So I'm not gonna have any issues there over time. Let's see if I can get that just a little bit tighter. There we go. So now I got a nice flush cut so I shouldn't get any more growth from that. Now, this one's gonna come into play. So now it's, does this one come off? So a lot of times I look at it and I say, I think it's time. I think it's time for it. It's too low to the ground. It's too low to the base. It's not going to catch up to these larger trunks. It's never going to, it's never going to stay on for the long term. So let's go ahead and take it off. And it is close to the base. It's almost, it's almost in the ground, but it is on the main trunk. So again, I always like that because it shows me that I'm probably not going to have a problem with a lot of sucker issues. Uh, so that was a pretty significant branch and imagine this being, you know, a 20 foot tree, that would be a 20 foot portion of the tree, but over time it's going to improve it. So now I just kind of look at it, say, do I want to go up any higher? Do I have any major issues that I need to correct? Are there any crossing branches? I don't see any major crossing branches. I got some weak wood. I do like to try and get the center a little bit hollowed out so you can't even see my hand. So my hand disappears in the center. I'd like to maybe just kind of hollow that out just a little bit to allow some sunlight in. And I've got some tiny little weak branches in here. So we'll take some of that out. I do tend to tell people, and I do tend to do this myself, I tend to get a little too high on it. So sometimes I need to stop myself and say, don't go too high, because all of a sudden I'm, I'm up into here and I got this little tiny top and this hugely exposed trunk. It's hard to stop yourself sometimes, but it's good to stop, stand back, look at it, and you can always do a little bit more tomorrow. So you can kind of look at it, address it. Like I said, it's hard to put it back on. It's hard to get it to regrow and come back and put it back on. So you might as well take your time and prune off what you need. All right, I think I'm pretty happy with that. So there we go, that's what my tree looks like now that it's been pruned. Let me take my little tag off here so that doesn't get visually in your way. This was just so I didn't lose my tree. All right, so now we've got a before and after here. So let me move this off to the side just a little bit. All right, so now we can really see this before and after. So this is before, very, very shrubby, very, very full at the bottom, looks like a big bush. Not bad, if that's what you're going for, this will accomplish it for you and you can let it grow naturally, you don't have to do it. But then, now I've got a specimen. Now I've got something that creates interest. It creates interest throughout the entire season. It's gonna force all the growth up to the top it's got nice airflow through the center, so I've got a nice area here that'll help kind of get that airflow in there, prevent disease and insect issues, not a, pl a lot of places to hide, and now it forces all the energy to the top. And as I mentioned before, one of my favorite things is being able to create spaces that maybe I couldn't get more plants in, now I can underplant this. So I can put some liriope around it, I can plant some annuals around it, I can do a ground cover, I can do lots and lots of different things, daffodils, tulips. There's so many different companion plants that work great with crepe myrtles, um, or really any small tree, because you're not gonna have a lot of disruption with the root system. One, you're not gonna hurt the root system, and two, uh, the root system's not gonna absorb all of the nutrients because it's a smaller tree. Now on a 25, 30 foot tall Muscogee, Natchez, Tuscarora, those are gonna be a little bit harder to get something established underneath, but if you're starting with a young tree, it's 10, 12, 15 feet tall, it's easy to get something established underneath it with some companion plants. So if you got a big shrubby crepe myrtle out there and you wanna limit up, this is a great technique 
and it just really, really enhances the look of your crayon myrtle for many, many years, forces the energy up top, allows you to sit underneath it, walk around it, mow around it much easier. So it's a great way to turn your shrubby plant into a much nicer tree form plant that at least we all think is a tree, has a trunk, has a top, and it's really, really a lot of fun and it's easy to do. So I hope those techniques helped you out. I don't see any questions, so I'm assuming everybody got this. So now when somebody says you just need to limit up, it'll make it look a lot better. Now you'll know how to do it. It's a very easy, simple technique. I hope you all enjoyed this and I hope you all come in and see us here at McDonald Garden Center. Great technique that you can use anywhere around your landscape on lots and lots of different plants. So hopefully you enjoy this. It's a nice short little sweet one here for you. Limbing up techniques for limbing up your crepe myrtles. I hope you all enjoy this. Have a great day, everybody, and I'll see you next time.